Buenas noches, invitados de honor. Huh? Good evening to the ambassador of Colombia, Mr. Fernando Alzate and his spouse, Nancy Moncleano, senior executive vice president of the Technion, Professor Adam Schwartz, Max Blankstein, of the member of the Blankstein family, our honored lecturer, Simon Veles, architect Simon Veles, faculty dean, Professor Iris Daravot, faculty members, students of the faculty, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are privileged to mark the 10th anniversary of the uh, Blankstein Visiting Lectureship, which was established in 2007 by the Winnipeg chapter of the Canadian Technion Society. The Blankstein Visiting Lectureship holds a great mission of bringing leading architects, international architects, every year to present their work in a public lecture at the Technion and to meet with our faculty and students. Uh, our former Blankstein lecturer includes archite architects such as uh, uh, Jack Diamond, Mosh Safadi, Raymond Mariama, Tom Main, uh, Andrian Gass, Kay Diamond, Roger Diner, and uh, Nader uh, Teherani. And today, it is my great privilege uh, to open the 2017 uh, Morally Blankstein Lectureship and to invite our uh, Dean, Professor Iris Saravot, to open this evening and to present uh, our lecturer, architect Simon Veles. Thank you very much. Okay, so I should say, uh, gracias, Ifrat. Um, His Excellency, the Ambassador of Colombia to the State of Israel, uh, Mrs. Fernando Ereste, um, Mrs. Uh, Nancy Moncaliano, uh, Professor Adam Schwartz, Senior Executive, Vice President of the Technion, uh, Mr. Max Blankstein, uh, and representatives and friends of the Blankstein family, our very honorable guest, architect Simon Veles, dear professor, students, colleagues, and guests. Thank you all for attending the 2017 Morley Blankstein Lecture. This prestigious lectureship hosts this year architect Simon Veles from Colombia. Born in Manizales, Colombia, he is the son and grandson of architects. Since graduating from Los Andes University more than 40 years ago, Mr. Velez has been a leading proponent in sustainable building, particularly in the use of bamboo. He has worked mostly in rural architecture, although some of his projects are urban. Some decades ago, Velez discovered a construction technique that allowed him to use bamboo as a true vegetal steel. This technique is very basic and consists of injection, of injecting cement mortar in the empty chambers of bamboo where there are structural unions. For four consecutive years, he has been invited by the Vitra Design Museum and the Georges Pompidou Center to conduct workshops in France in which structures of bamboo guadua were built as an instructive exercise. He had led workshops around the world in bamboo joinery and assemblage systems. For Expo Hanover 2000, he designed and constructed a 2,000 square meter bamboo pavilion for Zeri Foundation. That is, uh, this is Zero Emissions Research and Initiative. The structure utilized bamboo, recycled cement, copper, and a mixture of terracotta, cement, and bamboo fiber panels. It was the first time in history that the bamboo structure received a building permit in Germany. 
With 6.4 million visitors, it became the most popular pavilion of the World Expo. Vélez participated in designing Crosswaters Eco Lodge, an ecotourism destination in China in the forest of Nankun Shan Mountain Reserve in the Guangdong province. It is the largest project in the world to use bamboo in a commercial project and the first project of this scale in Asia to use bamboo as a structural element in a dwelling. The project received the American Society of Landscape Architects 2006 Analysis and Planning Award of Honor. Vélez has designed bamboo buildings in Germany, France, the United States, Brazil, Mexico, China, Jamaica, Colombia, Panama, Ecuador, and India. He designed the Socalo Nomadic Museum in Mexico City, which houses Gregory Colbert ashes and snow. In December 2010, Vélez received the Principal Prince Klaus Award for his contribution to a positive interaction between culture and development. This prestigious Dutch award was founded by the Royal Prince Klaus. Since 1997, the Prince Klaus Awards are presented annually to artists, thinkers, and cultural organizations in Africa, Asia, Latin America, and the Caribbean. Collaborating with Indian partners, Simon Veles participated in Expo 2010 Shanghai, China, as part of the team of the Indian Pavilion. In 2013, he designed some new bamboo buildings for Longuan International Biennale, uh, LIB, LIB, which was launched from the municipality of Longuan, uh, Zhejiang province, 500 kilometers south of Shanghai. The LIB is an architectural event staged every two years in which architects of international stature are invited to build habitable buildings in a location of cultural and historical importance. The 2013 LIB invited 12 internationally renowned architects to rise to the challenge, and Vélez was among them. Last year, in 2016, Vélez participated at the Biennale of Venice, reporting from the front, where his work was presented by photographs and models. We are very happy and honored to invite architect Vélez to give his talk. Please. I will show you many photos. They have not any order. So that is one of my last projects. It was a prototype that I first designed in Bali for Richard Branson, but I, know, I don't know that guy. But it was a Chinese partner in Bali who hired me to make a design of a hotel that was never built. They say, we want to build something that has kind of Balinese spirit, but we are tired of the Balinese architecture. So let's make a proposal for that. It was never built in Bali. That prototype was built in Colombia in the Caribbean Ocean. But we only built one room. So this is the same prototype. I have to explain, I am not a bamboo architect. I also work with bamboo. So that has concrete, wood, steel, and bamboo on the roof. This is a house I built recently. Uh, we are making the future of bamboo. It's not the bamboo the way I work with it. I work in the hippie way. The real modern way is laminated bamboo. So you can see here, this is laminated. I will go fast, there are many photos. Same house, this is concrete cast with bamboo, with the split bamboo. And this is, we have a lot of rain, so the terrace is a deck, but it's made out of rebar, steel. It's not a, it's not a wooden deck. That was the prototype of the project we built in, in Mexico City in the biggest, it's one of the biggest squares in the world. So we, we built a prototype full scale to do the loading test. So it started with, wait, we started with that steel pipe. 
because we were not allowed to touch the ground at the Zócalo uh, main square of Mexico City. But this is a house I, be, I finished recently. This is Rebar. Someday I will be known, not because of my bamboo work, but because of my Rebar work. I like very much bamboo because bamboo is steel. It's steel for, from nature. And it is, bamboo is more strong than the steel. But we think bamboo is a very weak material, but it's really a very strong material if it is worked properly. This is a building that was done 4,000 meters above the sea level, near the volcano del Ruiz, which exploded 25 years ago and killed 30,000 people. So this is a place where to breathe and where to get adapted, laying down from the car to go to the snow peaks. This is from inside, it's bamboo. I never allow the bamboo to touch the ground. It has to be far from the moisture, even if it is inside. This is an iron grill to cover a patio, a cold yard, near the house where I live in the old part of Bogota, which is the, the Spanish area. It was the Spanish area. It was not finished, so, but it's covered by glass, not by plastic. My religion don't allow me to use plastic. <laughs> this is a house I built recently using the roots of the bamboo, the rhizomes. Those are the natural curve of the underground part of the bamboo, which is solid and it is very strong. And this is a, a wood produced by a palm tree we call macana. It's the exterior part of some palm trees is very hard, so I use it to do the ceilings. The indigenous used to make the arrows and the elbows from, from that material. That is the prototype we built to do the loading test for the Mexico structure. So there is not bamboo engineering, it's starting to be. So we built the prototype to make sure to, to show the, to the local authorities that the building was not going to collapse. So this is kind of an industrial, this is an industrial truss that has a name that I never remember what is the name. I, what I did was to translate that structural truss into, into bamboo, but also steel. Those elements are steel elements. And this is bamboo. It's another house I built up in the hills, almost 3,000 meters above the sea level. So in a very cold place near Bogota. This is using wood, but wood coming from a tree. Bamboo is also wood, but it's wood coming from a giant grass. But at the end, they are wood, both of them. They are lignina and cellulosa. I don't know how to say in English, but it's very similar. And this is, well, wait a second. This is concrete, cast with bamboo also. That is a mock-up done by one of my workers that I will show later some of the, uh, the, the structure. It was an exhibition in Switzerland. But recently I presented that mock-up also at the Venice Biennale. That was a church that I built first as a Catholic cathedral made in Pereira, which is a city very close to the city where I was born. So the old cathedral was damaged by a strong earthquake. So they hired me to make a temporary structure. We built it in one and a half months, and it lasted there for one and a half year. Then it was turned down, and now they built a very ugly modern building there. <laughs> but I have I am one of the partners of a big farm near Cartagena in the Caribbean, and we built again that religion, that, that church, but without any religion. So I always explain I was born Catholic, and five minutes before dying, I will be Catholic again, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the old cathedral, well, the temporary cathedral, 
That is a house I finished recently. It has living grass roof, but this is concrete, solid concrete walls, and it has a lot of different materials. This is what we call protection by design. Uh, you don't need to treat, to treat wood against box. You have to treat wood against box, which is not that dangerous. It's just with insecticide products. But to treat wood against funky is very dangerous, and it's not necessarily. If you are far from the moisture, you don't need to treat the wood against the funky, because funky treatment, they need heavy metals, and they are very poison, very dangerous, very expensive. So I only treat the wood and the bamboo with insecticides that are not that expensive and are not, are not that dangerous. So the wood is far from the moisture. This is something that I have built the most in my life. Uh, in, in India, the holy animal is the cow, but in Colombia, the holy animal is the horse. In Colombia, you can go to jail if you sell horse meat. We really love horses. It's our sacred animal there. So this is a stable for horses. But you can see here, it's protection by design. The bamboo is very far from the ground. This is the kind of drawings I, I used to make for my workers. That was the... the big building for an exhibition for Gregory Colbert in Mexico City at the main square, whose name is El Zócalo. It was really big. That is what you can see. It was 110 meters long and 50, 50 meters wide. And it was visited really by millions of people, because, mainly because it was free. <laughs> That is the same structure built by Shigeru Ban. It was first, first built in, in New York. Then it was built in Los Angeles, California. And then it was built in Tokyo. That is a photo I took in Tokyo because being the exhibition in Tokyo, the, the artist with Gregory Colbert, he, he does that kind of photos of people and animals in a very spiritual way. And those are containers made by Chigeru Ban. So the artist realized that Chigeru Ban had built a museum in Korea very similar to that. So when he, he realized it, he copied that museum from his design. He decided to hire me to build the next pavilion in Mexico. So that pavilion was sponsored by Rolex and by Slim and by Azcárraga family. That is the real green architecture. This is a house near the area where I was born, in Armenia, Kindio. And it is with living grass roof, but it rains a lot in that part. You cannot do that when you don't have a lot of rain during the year. And you don't need to cut the grass, never. You only cut here, once in a while. Well, that is the Mexican pavilion. That was every day like that. There was other pictures for people, but it was not visitor of the exhibition. It was that square is used for every every single person of Mexico go there to protest against the government once in a while. <laughs> well, I, I want the bigger screen photo. That was the exhibition inside. It was more than 100 meter long corridor to hang the pictures. So I used the rhizomes. Ah. I used here the rhizome and the pillars, but the pillars doesn't touch the ground. They are not fake pillars. It was so light roof that I had to add those pillars to produce weight. So they, anchor, they, they keep the, the building on site against the wind. That was another pavilion. I am always making kiosks. That was a big kiosk. 
and I have designed many, many different kinds of kiosks, and it's an exercise I like a lot to, to do. This is mangrove wood. This is bamboo, it's concrete, this is concrete. I always say architecture has to be like, like cooking. You cannot be completely vegetarian, you cannot be completely carnivorous. You have to mix ingredients. So as an architect, I am always saying we have to be a little bit more vegetarians. We use too much concrete, too, much, too many minerals. Architecture needs natural materials. I don't care about saving the world. The world will be very happy once we disappear. <laughs> but I use those materials because they are nice. I am an old hippie, so I really belong to the first generation that wanted natural material, wanted free sex, wanted not authorities. <laughs> so That is one of the many kiosks I I am always making, this is using the rhizomes. That is the natural curve that happens under the ground. That was the cathedral, the temporary cathedral facing the street in Pereira. Pereira is about 600,000 people, cities, maybe twice Haifa. So that was standing there for one and a half years. That is my friend Marcelo Villegas, he developed the system to do the bamboo boards. He's, he studied four years of architecture and four years of mechanical engineering. So he's kind of Leonardo da Vinci, but he smokes so much grass that his memory has troubles. <laughs> <laughs> So here we were doing the, the, the capitals of the pillars. So the Greek capitals were designed, inspired in the Acanto plant. This is a capital designed with the bamboo rhizomes. So even in the Greek architecture, it was always a reminiscence of the, of, of the organic world. So this is one of the large buildings I have done, this is steel pipes. I love steel, I am not a fundamentalist. This is palm tree wood. In Colombia you can go to jail by, because of using that material, but what I like the most of it is because it is banned. It's not a legal material. <laughs> that was the, main, the theater of that Mexico exhibition. The only remain of Shigeru Ban was the chair design that were done with cardboard. So the layout of that exhibition was done really by Gregory Colbert. Uh, Shigeru Ban built it with steel containers. And when I, I was asked to design that, I keep the layout, but I built the structure in my way. So those curves are not because they are beautiful are because they make a powerful structure. So the reason was not to make a nice wall, it was to make a structural wall. Another house, this is protection by design to keep the wood far from the moisture, this is concrete. And this is cast brass. I use a lot of cast brass elements that Marcelo Villegas, my friend, produced for me. And I also, I don't like, I don't like the wood to touch the concrete. So I use that kind of elements here. So it, it's also very good for earthquakes because there is you, liberación de energía, how do you say that? To free energy. That is one of the workshops I have done for the Vitra Design Museum and for the Pompidou Museum. That was three years ago. We built a bamboo roof using Chinese bamboo and using my technique. So this year they are going to build the walls that they want to use uh, ram earth walls but to, be, to support that roof. That is a structure I built in Colombia, but after having the experience of building the Indian pavilion at Expo Shanghai for the year 2000. That pavilion don't exist anymore, so I built that in Colombia, but 
I built it in the wrong way because we finished, it was very beautiful, but they decided to put a ceiling because they think it was not cozy to have such, such a high roof. So with the ceiling, they killed everything. That is a house I built recently using steel pipes and concrete pillars and with the concept of not touching the ground to allow the, the soil to keep the water to not to touch the ground. And this is guadua, this is the local bamboo. But it's a lot of steel. That is when I was awarded by the Prince Klaus Award. It's one of my few times that I wear that element. <laughs> that was the Indian Pavilion in Expo Shanghai. Chinese are crazy about technology. So that was not necessarily. All the materials here, you can handle them in your shoulders. But Chinese, they love technology. That was not really necessarily. So that was the Indian pavilion. I, I was not allowed to, took, to take my Colombian workers because they were for three years illegally working in China. So I am very proud because I sent the very first four illegal people to Colombia, of Colombia, to work there. They, they were with a tourist visa of 20 days, and they stayed there for three years. <laughs> so when I wanted to take those workers to, to China again, they were refused. They already have computers, so by the name, they know they are not allowed to go back there. So I had to train the Chinese. And I had, well, Chinese are really the best workers in the world, but I had a bad experience in China because at some moment I touched one of those workers with my hands and that guy almost killed me. <laughs> I, I realized that we are considered inferior people in China. It's a lot of racism there against the people who is not Chinese blood and against themselves. Like in Japan, a Korean guy can be 400 years ago in Japan and he's not considered a Japanese. So racism exists in many countries. That was another of the building for horses that I, I am always building for our holy animals. So here they drink the water directly from a pond. That is the church I built with my friends in our own farm near Cartagena. So that has not any religion. It's a church without religion. So it's the same church I built in Pereira, but there is no building in between. So I did a facade in the lateral areas. Another roof. That is one of the facades of the church. This is a computer drawing. I don't like those drawings, but it was the biggest project I have ever designed in my life. It was a bus station to be built in Cali, which is the number three city of Colombia. It's about three million people. So I designed that for a communist major. But then came a very rich major, and the communist major didn't manage to make it happen. So the rich guy, was also a very racist guy. So that was going to be built in an African neighborhood. 25% of Colombia is African blood. That's why we are so good for football <laughs> and for sex and for dancing. <laughs> so that was, it was like a train station, but it was designed for buses. That is almost 250 meter long. And usually they connect those elements with tunnels. So I, I designed it with bridges. That is one of the bridges using steel pipes and bamboo. That is one of the workshops I have done for the Vitra Design Museum and the Pompidou Museum. That was almost well, maybe 13, 14 years ago. And at the same time, it was Shigeru Ban making a workshop there. So he built a, a paper tube dome, and I built that during the same time. 
So we met each other there and we became kind of friends. That is a watchtower in the coffee area, which is also the bamboo area of Colombia. And it is the area where the ambassador, his wife, and myself, we grow up. This is my first living bamboo roof. I built that in, in Brazil after a trip I did to Norway. First time in my life that I saw living roof was in Norway. And I was so impressed by that, that arriving to Brazil, I, they asked me to build a bungalow for a hotel. So I told the guys, I have just arrived from Norway and I saw those living roofs. Let's do something like that. And the guy told me, yes, we came back from Norway recently. Let's do a living grass bamboo. That was almost 20 years ago, and it is still standing. It was going to be a hotel, but it was never built. So the guy built this bungalow, but he built 18 holes of, of golf. I am a hippie who don't smoke marijuana, but who plays golf. <laughs> and I really like to play golf, so I go kind of frequently to that farm to play golf. That is an old roof using macana, which is the palm tree wood, and bamboo. That was my very first house ever built for me using bamboo once I discovered that the technique of having cement mortar inside the hollow bamboo allowed me to build really big structures. This is an arch. An arch has no tension strength, only compression. But also for compression, if this is hollow and it is arriving a heavy load here, the bamboo crush. So once it is full of cement, which is very easy, it won't crush. So it's, an, it's a joinery system that works for compression and also for tension. Another house. That was part of that house. This is the, the tension strength goes here. And this is compression. That, that's why there are so many bamboo poles, because compression needs more area. Tension needs only a cable or a thin element. So here was my first time that I built a big overhang because I discovered how to do the tension joinery. So once I discovered that, bamboo started to be for me a kind of a steel, a natural vegetal steel. And we know the strength of the iron. We don't know yet the strength of the bamboo. Because the iron elements that I do here, they have, the, in the laboratory test we have done, we always found the failure in the steel elements. I don't know yet what is the strength of bamboo. But it's very high. It's much higher than the steel. Another house, this is protection by design. Because the idea, this is cement tiles, floors, that were very common. And the idea is to wash those roofs, those floors, every day with water. So the, the, the wood has to be far from the moisture. That was my first approach to do low-cost houses. I have a friend in Ecuador who built very low-cost houses, mainly out of bamboo, but they are very ugly. So the idea was to do a very low-cost house, but trying to be not so ugly. <laughs> but I built that for a, for a major in Colombia. And our politicians are really thieves. So the major, which is standing here, he didn't give those houses to the poor. He gave all of them to his friends. And they rent the houses for the poor. I was never happy doing that. That was the, the, the constructive system. This is concrete. This is brick, uh, ceramic brick. And this is bamboo and expanded metal and cement mortar. And I don't like using uh, asbestos cement roofs because they are, very, they are very hot and they kill the people. Arbesto is a very dangerous fiber. Colombia is the only country in the world that produces asbestos and arbesto roofs. And we are complaining against the mafia people who sell bad drugs to the people. 
But when a, a drug addict is buying a drug, he knows he's killing himself. And the bandit who sells the drug knows that he's doing something wrong for the guy. But those people are rich industrial people who own the asbestos industry in Colombia. And they know they are killing the people. And the people who buy those roofs in asbestos, they don't have any idea that it's a killing material. So for me, it's much more criminal an industrial guy who is producing those roofs than a mafioso who produced the drugs. That was a bridge I built in a complex in China in a national park. So I was part of a team, and whenever I showed that picture, I showed that picture four years ago in China, in a very important university there, and I, I told the guys when I was explaining it that was the very first bamboo structure ever built in China as a permanent material. And nobody say, you are a liar, it's not true. It was really true. It was the very first time in China that a bamboo structure was built as a permanent uh, structure, not as a temporary structure. So that is when we were building the bridge. None of the bamboo come more far than 100 meters around. It's a bamboo forest, but our bamboo is much better than the Chinese bamboo. And I was telling the Chinese, everything in Colombia that you buy come from China. The chips where you send those materials, they come back empty to China. Why don't you import guadua, bamboo guadua from Colombia? But they didn't allow me to do it in, in, in guadua. So I had four workers there for three years with no papers. And they had to learn how to eat dog. We don't eat our pets, but Chinese, they love to eat dog. And for them to prove they were already OK there, they had to kill the dog to peel, to take the skin out, to prepare it and to eat it. And we also love horses. Not only horses, we love dogs. A dog in Colombia is part of your family. It's worse than cannibalism. That is in China also. So I had three Colombian workers. They were there for three years. But in the first week, the local workers, they were so intelligent, so skillful, that we, we teach them one week. Then we were learning from them. So in that part, I didn't have any bad racist uh, problems. It was in, in Shanghai. That was near Guangzhou. That was the loading test in China. I always say, you can kill people when you build a structure. So you better hire an engineer, because it's better to have the engineer in jail than to have the architect in jail. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very important, really, because we are not trained as engineers. And with that kind of structure, you can make a big damage, kill a lot of people. So it's, even in my illegal construction, I always hire an engineer. <laughs> that was Mexico. That was nine meter long bamboo poles. With Chinese bamboo, you cannot do that. Because at four meters, it becomes very thin. And, and it's not as straight up as, as this bamboo. That is another of the structure for the horses. That is my office in Brazil. My, <laughs> my engineer, my landscape architect, and my accountant. So. <laughs> That's why I like so much going to Brazil. That was the Chinese, the Indian pavilion at Expo Shanghai. That is a, a, a palm oil plantation that has the kosher uh, stamp, because the owners are Jewish, Colombian Jewish, and they sell their production mainly to the kosher Jewish community in New York. So the, the, the rabino, how do you say rabino? The rabbi that visit the plantation every year has become kind of an environmental uh, freak. He's crazy about environmental. So this family hired me to do a uh, eco building. So it has uh, wood, bamboo, 
and living grass roof, but also concrete. And that is the palm oil plantation. So that is the joinery in that. This is aluminum, cast aluminum. I don't like the bamboo to touch the wood, because the bamboo, you, you, the wood, you never get the, the dry wood. It shrinks a lot. So if you allow the shrinking of the wood, you have big problems with the shape of the roof. So during the construction, there are bolts here. So this is like a jack. So during the construction, the, the, this wood is shrinking. So I have to, to, to tight those elements to make sure that the structure doesn't get affected in the drawing. That is another of the houses. This is eight meter long bamboo overhang. So it's really a very big overhang. And this is concrete. And this is clay tiles that are very heavy. And usually the engineer are always telling me, you have to make very light roofs. And I told the guy, I don't care. I like heavy roof. And you have to believe me. It's not going to collapse. It's not going to kill anybody. But I need your numbers. <laughs> this is for horses. So the rooms are here. And each room has a horse in front. And the main garden of that house is a polo field. So poor people in Colombia, they really hate bamboo. But rich people, they can afford bamboo. Well, that is the church from inside. I just copy the traditional churches, Catholic churches, that has eight meter wide in the center and four meter wide in the lateral element. And this is, those are 12 meter long bamboo poles. So with Chinese bamboo, you cannot get that, or Japanese. But with the Colombian bamboo, you can get 12 meters long. This is the drawings I use for my workers. That was the palm oil plantation. This is one of my few urban work. It's the 21 floor of a very ugly building downtown Bogota, the name of the building is Korkidi, which is a Jewish family name. So it was a very, built, a very ugly building, so I tear down the last floor and rebuilt that in steel, steel jacks. I didn't want it to touch the, the, the concrete floor, and the roof is bamboo. You can see it's a bamboo structure inside, and this is clay tile. So that was built without building license, but of course I hire an engineer. <laughs> and the strength, this, bam this is bamboo, this is steel. And believe me, the strength of this and this may be stronger than the bamboo. If you know how to work the bamboo. If you don't know, it's a disaster. It's another kiosk. This is not bamboo, this is wood. This is a, a project I built for Carrefour. They wanted to play eco business, so they hired me to design an eco structure. So I was building bamboo. It was going to have living grass roof, but then it was not done. That is when I was building the eight meter uh, overhangs. Here are the horses, and in front is the polo field and the swimming pool. That is the structure in the 21 floor. This is a bridge I built in Colombia. It's 46 meter span. Almost at the same time, I built the same bridge in China, but only 26 meter span, because Chinese bamboo is not as strong as the Colombian bamboo. So when I was awarded in the Netherlands, in front of the queen, and the major of Netherlands, who was a Jewish guy at that moment in Amsterdam, I, they asked me, what do you want to do in Amsterdam? I tell them, I want to build a bridge in one of your canals. But they, they say, no, no, that is too difficult. Let's make a, a, a stage for music. That is the bridge. That is using uh, basket weaving fabric, not expanded metal and white cement. More horses. This is the real structure of the mock-up that I showed you at the beginning. 
another kiosk. That was built as a prototype in, Hano in Manizales, where I was born. But that building, exactly the same, was built in Germany for the Hanover exhibition, for the World Expo in Hanover year 2000. So we built that just to do the loading tests. And the loading tests were successful, so we built it again in Germany. Another house. This is the laundry of my countryside house using the rhizomes. Another house, no bamboo. Everything is, is wood coming from trees. And those are rebar stairs and the swimming pool. This is another house. This is six meter, uh, eight meters wide, the, the overhang. This is the drawing for the church. That I built in Jamaica. It has already stand uh, 300 kilometers per hour strong winds. Those are the real hurricanes. And nothing has happened to that structure. I built that for a Jewish guy who was the owner of the copyright of Bob Marley music. So that guy became really very rich because of Bob Marley, but Bob Marley was also very rich because of this guy. <laughs> so it's bamboo rhizomes. That was Mexico. That was the theater in Mexico. This is 18 meters span. That is the church in Cartagena. This is one of the narrow galleries. It's only four meters wide, but in the center is eight meters. So this is the guy that I copy the church, and I am not paying royalty to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to do that, it's so difficult. You think bamboo is easy to bend and to curve. It's very difficult. I wanted more curve, but it was not possible. But in nature, you can see they bend a lot. But in the reality, it's not like that. So that is the church. It's in the middle of an artificial pond. That is the living grass house. So you just cut this part if you want. That was the Indian pavilion at Expo Shanghai. So I was the engineer, kind of engineer, to doing that. They hired me to do a decorative work, but I convinced the Chinese and the Indians to allow me to do a structural work. That was the Hanover Pavilion. It is still standing in Colombia, but the one in Hanover don't exist anymore. That is for horses. Also, this is stainless steel. This is the drawings that I, that was the Chinese bridge. That I designed it in Amsterdam because the mayor asked me to design something to play music in a park. And we were trying to get the building permit, but in the Netherlands it's almost impossible. The Blind People Association, they say, we don't like that building. So, <laughs> no way. So that's why I prefer a country like Colombia where corruption allows you to do whatever you want. <laughs> Excuse me, ambassador. But <laughs> <laughs> so that was the drawing for Amsterdam. OK, that is the pavilion in Colombia, but they put a, a ceiling. So I was really proud of that structure. And I can build, I can cover a football field with that kind of structure. It's mixing concrete, wood, steel pipes, and bamboo, and cement mortar, and a very heavy roof. If you work with domes, a dome cannot be light, has to be heavy. Other way, it doesn't work. So whenever you design with dome, you don't have to worry about the load. Well, you have to worry about the ground. You have to hire a an engineer to do the study of the ground. 
But this is kind of a mock-up to build a huge building. That was a prototype of a low-cost house building, a four-story. We, we only had the money to make one platform. That was done as a workshop in France. This, and they covered that with steel and glass, but it, it's a very light structure out of bamboo. Those are the tiles. Another dome we use in the rhizomes. That is solid wood, it's not bamboo. That is the bamboo board that we are starting to produce in Colombia with the flattened bamboo. That is the future of bamboo, to produce that kind of materials. That is a computer drawing, one, two, three, four apartments, concrete. Steel pipes, not steel pipes, uh, angulos, L shape, steel, and the bamboo Boards are not doing any structural work. Only, it's only a skin. That is how it will look. But this is adding colors. The color is a protection for the sunlight. So the idea is to produce aesthetics for the low-cost houses. That is the Jewish family business of palm oil. They have 20,000 hectares which is kind of big, of palm oil. So all that production has a good price because they sell it in New York. So that's why they hired me to, pro to make that because they wanted to make happy the ecological rabbin. Another roof, same factory. It's a living grass roof for that palm oil plantation. This is a little house for the bodyguards of a rich guy that I built a house in Colombia. But at the end, that little house becomes so beautiful that it became the guest house. So the bodyguards, the bodyguards, the bodyguards they don't have any house. <laughs> that is a house I built for the Colombian ambassador in Spain. He is a Jewish, they are a very important Jewish family that now are the ambassador of Colombia in Spain. So it was under construction. It's already finished. And, and we are not friends anymore. That happens constantly. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the Furmansky house when, it, when he was happy. <laughs> that is another house. I built a kiosk using living grass roof because that part of Colombia has a lot of water. Same roof, another kiosk, another house using living grass roof. This is, well, that was a pagoda I designed it in China. It, it, it was, the idea was to do a, a Buddhist area in a, in a rich people destination. So they were going to be surrounded by a lot of country golf courses, and they hired a very important landscape architecture firm, and that firm hired me. So the idea of the Chinese authority was to have a spiritual feeling again, because they became a very far guy from the religion. And they have realized that religion and the spiritual thinking is very important. So the idea was to make a Buddhist uh, temple but not in the Tibetan style. I don't know what is the Tibetan style. But I did that design, and they were kind of happy, but it was never built. That is a house I finished recently in Colombia, using the rhizomes, rhizomes, steel pipes. That is the Furmansky house. Again, the Furmansky's house, Furmansky's. I love rebar, so it's a lot of rebar work. This is the, the deck of the terrace. I don't like to use wood when there is uh, exposed to the sunlight and the moisture, so I prefer to use a stone. Same house. Okay, that's all. Thank you.